Hello everyone, hi, how are you guys doing? Welcome back to another episode of a The Expanse Reaction. This is Rose Live, and my name is Matt. I'm letting y'all right now uh, know that I am one, tired, as in I almost fell asleep just now, and two, I'm a little bit sick, not like sick, but like my nose is running, so, sure, uh, so yeah, I'm just I'm just letting everyone know right off the bat that I'm I'm just gonna be a little bit low energy and also like sick for this reaction. But what are you gonna do? Uh, we we have to do this shit. We have to do this shit every week. So, all right. So, the expanse. Last time on the expanse, we started season four, and they they just throw a bunch of shit at me, and I'm I I'm not gonna remember any of it. But I did write down like a ton of shit. Okay, so from what point? Okay, so the Barbara Picola, which was the ship with the Belters that eventually got to Illus, which is a planet rich in lithium. That planet, I believe, is also known as New Terra by the Earthers. Uh, the, so they settle on that planet. And then the, sh uh, the UNN sent another ship. I don't remember which one. Was it the Tripoli? Maybe. Which was a scientif uh, scientist uh, ship. And that got shot down by whatever. I think it was like the bugs that we saw at the end of the episode. And uh, it got destroyed and it crashed. And there were only a few survivors. Including Chief Mercury. I think that was his name. Which is just Owen from Torchwood. I'm just going to call him Owen. Um, there was also like a lady and another dude. And those were the scientist people. And that's, that's all I remember from them. Uh, then Holden and the Rosy Green General. Uh, Naomi has a bad hairstyle. <laughs> I mean, bad is subjective, but I don't personally like it because it's, it's it lacks bangs, you know. But uh, the thing is that uh, they they all got together and they were given a mission by Krishna Pazarala, who is not the president of the earth, the most badass president of the earth because she takes no shit. It's just angry grandma, and she told them to go to Illus and see what the fuck is there because they saw like a construct which is like proto molecule build and they were like okay what the fuck is this about and then they were like okay we gotta send james holden because he's is jesus who keeps having visions of of miller and miller keeps telling him hey uh let's stick a ride let's let's go there hey uh hey who turned out the lights you know um so he keeps saying that and eventually oh and i forgot like, I forgot that this is something that happened in previous review, but I noticed during, like, the edit thing. It's the fact that uh, when... So when Holden went through the ring, again, first of all, every time he goes through the ring, he, like, sees some shit, right? I think. Maybe maybe I'm just thinking about it too much, but I think he does. The thing is that last time he did that, Miller was like, okay, we're in. And then we saw, like, from the point of view of Miller, that he was seeing Holden and it was, like, a different vision. And then he, like... And then we went into, like, the Orb Construct, which is inside the, the, the ring hub thing. And that tells me, and I forgot to bring this up, that tells me that, like, that is Miller vision. And that means that every time Miller is not there with Holden, he, act, like, like, okay, so everything that we saw in that, like, scene that moved really fast and then he went into the, like, the construct that was just miller first person point of view so that means that like whatever miller is isn't well we already kind of knew he wasn't just an illusion of holden's mind even though he kind of is but not really because he has the hat and also someone told me uh, that in the finale for previous season and this is actually something really cool that i didn't notice is the fact that holden um so Miller told him something in Belter, and Holden was like, what the fuck does that mean? And then Naomi and Drummer heard that, and they were like, because, like, Holden shouldn't know what that is. Only a, Berto, a Belter would know, and Miller, Miller was a Belter, so he was like, what? So uh, we, we have enough indication to, to the fact that Miller is not actually just like a just like a manifestation of Holden's imagination, even though that's kind of the de description that he told him. So either he's lying or it's kind of like a mix of both. Um, but uh, it's actually something that originates from somewhere and it's projecting from somewhere, which you already kind of 
can kind of infer because he said that he has low signal when he's further away from the ring, which means that when which means that it's something that is projecting from the ring or from somewhere that is closer to the ring than it is from to like Earth. Um, but when we saw that, that tells me that that Miller image is probably projecting from the construct, like the orb, inside of the ring hub. You know, the place where we saw, like, in, in the previous season, right? So, um, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm imagining it's like a it's like a projector, like a cinema projector, and it's projecting Miller. Um, but the construct is the actual machine. So the closer you are to it, the, the stronger the signal will be. And whenever Miller is not with Holden or with anyone, he comes back to the to the uh, construct, the orb construct. Okay, uh, I, I feel like I should have said that previous episode, but I forgot. So I'm saying I'm saying it right here. Oh no, the Edward Israel was the science ship. Never mind. I don't know what the fuck the Tripoli was. I think it was one of the random ships that shot down to Barbicola or whatever. Uh, we ha I wrote down two names, David and Lily. I don't remember who they are. Um, oh, those are the the people that are living with Gunny. Gunny is also unemployed, apparently. No, well, not unemployed. She she was doing something. I forgot. But she was doing something like moving some like missile or whatever into like a ship or, or some shit. I don't know what it was. But she was doing something the first time we saw her. So she actually does have a job. Um, uh, I don't know what the Amber drug was. The OPAS. Tinan. I think that is the ship with, uh, with, um, fuck, I forgot his name, Ashford, yeah, cool old guy, because he was the only person that was in an actually, like, fleet ship for the OPA, right, because now they're, like, legit, which is weird, um, and yeah, I, I think those are all my notes, uh, the cool shit is that now the Rosie crew, and, and, you know, like, the plot is happening on an alien planet, uh, on Elos, and there's some crazy shit that can happen on Alien Planet. By the way, I asked where was that film, and people told me, and I looked it up too. Uh, it's it's just in Toronto. It's in Canada. It's like north, north from Toronto, from like a quarry or whatever, uh, something like that. Uh, so I was like, yeah, okay, I can I can buy that because it's like Canada is only like I don't know, like thirty percent habitable, right? Like everything else is just like nothing because it is actually like almost inhabitable to live the further north you go in Canada. So a lot of Canada is just like nothing and it's just like crazy shit. And it's like, okay, you can film like an alien habitable planet there, I suppose, you know, and it's gold and it's like, yeah, it makes sense. Um, so yeah, they just did that and then they put like a blue filter over it and, and there you go. We're good. Uh, so yeah, I, I think that that's it for this intro. I think we can just go again. I'm sorry if I'm, like sick but what are you gonna do about it okay so let's let's begin so the expense season four episode two let's go what are we doing Mr. Where this? this is clearly miller but okay never mind that shit we're just gonna we're just gonna move into into this now it's a machine well, that's very terrestrial thinking is, is it it's like a construct of both things. It's like a little... Life on Earth developed using potassium, <laughs> carbon, and calcium. But it could just as easily have been arsenic, silicon, and iron. To us, this looks like a machine, but on this planet, it could be an organism. I like that. Protomolecule tech. Yeah, it's a construct. Yeah, we should test everyone for infection. Oh, yeah, the building that they came here to check. It probably came from there. Okay, that's a dead body. That's multiple dead bodies. Appears they came from the Sojourner, Sojourner, a prospective UN colony ship, at the blockade for nearly 13 weeks, waiting for permission to transit the race. Okay, so they were... Regional flight control lost track of it a month ago. Okay, so it was a ship that was waiting for permission to pass. It went missing. Yeah, pirates got them. It sends a message that the peace cannot change a century of anger overnight. Mm. And that there are belters who still know how to hate. Well, they can send message all the way here, from the ring. If this will get out one way or another, it's going to scare people. Maybe that's not so bad. It'll support your position that going through the rings is too dangerous. 
Sometimes I fucking hate being right. <laughs> Do I know this guy? I never thought I'd see the Aurora Borealis on Mars. No. Oh. And I'm an unbelievably luncheon. Unforgettable, that was it. An unforgettable luncheon. People who built the great Gothic cathedrals. Knowing they belonged dead before the work was finished. Trusting that their great grandchildren would lay the final stones. We've lost that kind of generational thinking on Earth. Here, you see it in everything they do. They might meet and not. The honor of your presence is requested. <laughs> okay. They're gonna meet. Is she gonna ignore it or is she gonna go? If she ignores it, they're probably gonna search for her. Wait, that's... That's a girlfriend, isn't she? That's Lily. Is she like a spy? Is she like a spy trying to get dirt and gunny or something? What's happening? Are you kind of doing something legal while working? Demolition tech third class Roberta W. Draper. Okay. I prefer Bobby. Formerly gunnery sergeant Roberta Draper of the Martian Marine Corps. Before that, I was sent to run my basketball team. Dishonorably discharged for repeated acts of insubordination. No, they moved me to power forward. Family man. Good Martian. I'll take your word for it. He was found in a cargo container this morning with his neck snapped. Oh. Jesus, is that what this is all about? Your file says you were directly involved in the deaths of two members of your Marine fire team. I assume they train your special forces types to resist augmented interrogation. Yeah, and they also trained me to snap necks. But I haven't done either of those things since coming home. Is Mars still home? Having dinner with the UN Secretary General is quite an honor for a Martian dock worker. <laughs> you seem very fond of Earthers. For a Martian, I mean. Fuck you! Everything I've ever done has been for Mars. I came back here to willingly face a court-martial for Mars. I scrapped those bloody ships every day for Mars! She got under her skin. Right. You can go. That character looks like such an asshole. That lady. We keep randomly having scenes that have like the, the like letterbox bars that like change the, the aspect ratio, but not really. Amos and Owen in the car. There's so much douchebaggery in this one car. They're both such assholes. Like, I don't even know Owen in the show yet, but. Hey, Murdy. Murdy. It's like a blasting cap to you. It's my tree. Murdy tree. Yes, yes okay. it does. See the scorches in these beams? You guys didn't have the main drive on when you came down, did you? No, we did not. I think someone blew up this pad. Let's see what sabotage. Was it sabotage? Everything shot in the spana has this weird like blue and yellow filter. I'm getting used to the horizon and open spaces. If it wasn't for you know, this might even be fun. Getting used to the horizon and open space. That makes sense because she's never she's never been in an open place before. She's only been to like ships and and stations. That's that's so interesting. It has never been outside. Like, that's wild. This structure predates multicellular life on this planet. It's been here since the only living things were bacteria, analogs, and whatever fills viral niches. Protomolecule hijacks. Organic life and uses it for its own purposes. When it landed here, it would have killed everything it touched. So evolution on this planet would have had to start over three biomes then. Three? Whatever made the protomolecule. <laughs> The local biosphere and now us. That's a lot of interacting systems. There's no way to tell how they're mixed. So whatever was here on the planet was killed when that thing showed up. And what we have now is the planet after the world was infected by the protomolecule to a degree. And now maybe the only living forms, the only living life forms, are born from this interacting with the planet. I heard a little rumor that uh there's a saloon around here. Not much of one. They serve pretty much the same thing I've been sterilizing the scalpels with. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Well, I could really use a drink. I think you could too. Looks like we got two new customers. 
This is Jacob, my husband, and uh, Data Fasia. No, you're much older than I thought you were. to make your acquaintance. Same. Alex, what? you're welcome to join for dinner. Oh, yeah, no, it, it's been a long, rough day, and you guys need some family time together, right? All right, I'll see you soon. I think he was just hitting on her. That was, that's what the drink invite was. And then he's like, no, no, I'm good. Where did you get this? At the pad. Your people blew up that pad deliberately. That's what took down our shuttle. You killed a lot of my people. That is a wild accusation to make. You tried to pin it on us like Inas always do. <laughs> do the right thing. Get the word out. You have until morning to give me the people that planted the bomb. We will not be intimidated. Either they pay for this, or you all will. That is a bold attitude to have in a room when there's like 20 people and only one of you, and maybe Amos. Your friend left. Who, Marty? It's not my friend. What do you got on tap? What you got to barter? Prime Minister. Interesting. Oh yeah, the, the Asperger Ranger changed again. We just received this from New York. Mm. Mm. You and Home Secretary to resign? Hi, I'm Bobby. Okay. That's the one who killed our team on Ganymede? Shit. Sergeant Draper. I'm not a sergeant anymore, sir. Of course, my apologies. Roberta. Bobby, please. Okay, casual. Who are you? Sergeant Avasarala, at your service. I have wanted to meet you for such a long time to thank you in person for saving my Christian's life. You're welcome, sir. And respectfully, if you married Christian, you're a hell of a lot braver than I ever was. <laughs> <laughs> because it's the husband. I completely forgot. I haven't seen him since like season one, episode like seven or whatever. My He's dear seven. friend, Admiral Michael Sauter once said, the right. war does not end when people put down their guns. It ends when they reconcile. Until then, the war has only paused. He died in defense of Earth and Mars and the greater truth that unites us. But my planet has no monopoly on people of courage and conscience. They're here as well, the best of us, and our only hope for a lasting and permanent peace. Clearly a belter, but we were unable to identify the ship. I've been ordered to share the data with you. Okay. In the hopes that together we may find a way to bring the guilty to justice. We will do what we can do. And rest assured, so will we. What this passive aggressiveness? They want to head on a spike so they don't look weak. Well, they are weak. <laughs> can no longer police the help. Then we can best do it for them. Every time we cut to Illus, it's a different aspect ratio. And I cannot tell why that is. She's doing really... She's having a very difficult time with... Yeah, okay. I'm assuming it's the gravity. Okay, yeah, she's picking. She didn't want the warrior hold on. I'm fine. You're not. Ugh. Just a little tired, that's all. It's your cardiovascular system. It should. It just ain't developing quickly enough. I guess my body's a slow learner. No, Naomi, and your heart just ain't as strong as it needs to be in this gravity. Plain and simple, you gotta slow down, take things easier. If you don't, you're gonna have palpitations. Okay. Eventually your heart, it's... I'll get through it. Naomi, don't say anything to Holden. He'll overreact, he's... Got enough on his mind already. You properly react because this is serious. Your heart is gonna explode, girl. Just lay down. <laughs> About the 16 by 9. Marco Inaros. Inaros. Marco Inaros. How well do you know him? Only by reputation. Naomi said you knew what he did to her. She's one of the smartest people I've ever met. How did Marco Inaros get his hooks in her? Ah, he's charismatic. Is his son? Oh, this is the. This is the man, isn't he? The fanatic we always always referred about. It'll take a big bounty to bring this one in. Okay. Not even a goodbye. You were busy. 
but it was nice to meet your husband. Be careful. He is a charmer, but he'd only break your heart. He was the only one who would even speak to me. I'm surprised that Martians would be so ungracious. Did Admiral Salda really say any of that? I don't know. We rarely spoke. <laughs> Playing some game that I don't understand. It was humiliating. I wasn't trying to embarrass you. I wanted to see I you. had no place at the table. To show the rest of the idiots in that room that you still have friends in high places. All they saw was Earth calling its lapdog to heal. Come and work for me. What? Fuck these people. If they don't see how glorious you are, they don't deserve you. I don't need you to save me. You don't owe me this. Bobby. Good night, ma'am. Hmm. Is this a construct? So what do we got here? We need to talk. What up, Miller? Fuck you, man. I'm busy. I need your hands, okay? I still don't have those, but we're running out of time. Tick tock, tick tock. That door won't stay open forever. Okay, stop. Put on clothes for you. To the same place you were yesterday, except that now it's magic we're gonna work. Uh, I'd feel a hell of a lot better if uh, someone stayed at the Rossi, watched our asses in case we need backup. Yeah, I'll be safe. You okay with that? Yeah. I'll look after you, boys. Yeah. Please. All right, well, Holden and I are going on this Later. mission. <laughs> He's like, fuck it, I'm just drinking here. Glad to see you don't need those bullets. Well, I got plenty of lead and chemicals on the Rossi. It's easy to make more. Shit, I could be rich here. Sure, but there's nothing to buy. How about that? Oh, wow, they don't let you sleep on the ship? I'm gonna sleep outside. It's like Earth here. Except it's not Earth. He likes it here. <laughs> Where are you going? Meet some friends. It's light. So the... Okay, the girlfriend. Right? That dude's girlfriend. They, what's his name, David? Lily. Her. She's the killer. Or maybe I'm crazy. What's the Okay, no, no. This is going somewhere. So I'm thinking that she's the killer. Maybe he's the killer, too. Well, fuck it. They're trying to incriminate Bobby. So they got close to her. And now they're going to try and frame her. For whatever reason. Secret, secret. I've got a secret. What are you doing, dude? You're making drugs? What the hell are you up to? These people are coming. Yeah, her. You are such an idiot. I bet your girlfriend here knows something about a customs agent getting beat to death down by the docks this morning. No, not a thing. She was there, wasn't she? Fuck this! Okay, it's going down. Super on. <laughs> just hide. Just hide, dude. Dora! 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 Keep going. He's scared. Okay, just go for the revenge. You're so fucked. David's out. For good. And next time it won't be a next time. Wow, I cannot believe that these two characters actually matter. I just randomly wrote out those names just in case. Turns out they were they actually did matter. And that story is gonna lead somewhere. She even told Gunny, you're so fucked. Like, this is probably gonna get into huge trouble now. No, we have stories. This hey. It's got a moral. I don't give a shit. Dude, oh, it's going somewhere. We get these mushrooms growing down here. Just see? tell me what the fuck we're looking for. <laughs> just, just like, get, get to the point, Miller. I need that out of there, okay? It's clogging what? up the works. What? Really? A root. Yeah. He needs hands. He doesn't have any hands. I'm just flipping switches, you know, seeing what lights come on. And right now, that's a switch I can't flip. These people built stuff that lasts for billions of years and it can't handle a few roots? That's a good question. There weren't any roots here when they built this stuff. I'd settle for just not having your voice in my head. One voice in his head. <sighs> well, that would be swell. What does that mean? 100,000 people died on arrows. Try carrying that around in your skull. Oh. Memories. Old woman humming her wedding song. Little kid having a nightmare. People screaming for a death that never comes. I'm sorry. Well, you finish this thing. Maybe we can all finally get some sleep, huh? So he's like. 
That that was quick. That was fucking quick, dude. I mean, you guys weren't being quiet to begin with. Hey, Juronano. Yeah, you, Pampa. Fucking in as you come, Reckon. And when we need to flee, do the Inners help us? No. They turn us from every port that we to seize. We left with nothing. So we come here. We stop by some vampires of death. But we beat these. We make something again. Dig up some treasure. Here come the fucking Inners who take it all away again. Like you always do. Don't lay your history on me. I didn't blow up shit on Ganymede. You and me, we have one problem today. Somebody in the shithole killed 23 of my friends. Yeah, for Earth. They ain't over yet. Now that was a threat. Fuck! <laughs> He's a piece of shit in the show, too. Okay. Nothing. That guy looked like he was gonna matter. Nothing. Instantly. Dead. That's moving. Okay. Yeah, this building is now in motion. This building has activated. What is it going? It's closing, isn't it? It's closing. If Amos was here, maybe he would be able to get in out in time, but... Okay, no, he's getting out. Otherwise, he was gonna get squished. Okay. Okay, he got out. What now, though? Should we, like, run away from, from this fucking building? Why is everything so dark still? What the fuck was that? How does it look outside? We saw in a thunderstorm. Okay, everything's one, super dark. Two, there's lightning striking the earth. This is great. No idea, man. No fucking clue. That's the end of the episode. Shit, I wanted some answers. But that is asking too much out of this show. That is asking way too much out of this show. Just, just, just tell me something. Okay, so first of all, what I want to say is that, like, I want to know what the fuck is the deal with the aspect ratio changing every, like, one or two scenes. Because, okay, so I didn't... I, I, I noticed it on the first episode, but I thought it was just like an, an a stylistic choice or whatever because like so the first episode happened on like our system and then when we hit this different system on on illus here then the aspect ratio changed to whichever aspect ratio this is um i'm not sure because usually so the aspect ratio you want to use for regular hd which you have for like my monitor or your tv or whatever is usually 16 by by 9 that is that is the default one so the aspect ratio kept changing from whenever we were on illus and whenever we were not like we went back to like abasarala we went back to gani um the aspect ratio changed and so in the first episode it was like okay fair because it feels like okay we finally made it to illus because that was like near the end of the episode and it was like okay we're here, and this is the inspiration now, and it's like, I don't know if they were going to stick to it, or I don't know if they were going to, uh, or, or if it's just, like, a thing they wanted to do because it, it, like, give it, like, a more cinematic feeling, or it was, like, cooler, or whatever, because now, like, we have this, like, open spaces, and it's, like, more movie-esque, or whatever the fuck they wanted to do. I got that feeling, so I didn't say anything about it, but in this episode, this episode... It's different because, because like, we go from a scene in Illus to a scene on Mars to a scene in Illus to a scene on like Space Earth to a scene in Illus to another scene in Mars to a scene in Illus to another scene in Mars, and then the aspect ratio change, and then a scene with like the Belters and and, and like uh and fucking. God, forgot her, their names again. Ashford and, and, and Drummer. And then back to Willis. And every single time the aspect ratio changed between full screen, 16 by, by 9, to whatever this one is. This is 16 by 10 or whatever. I'm not sure. But it's it that, right? It, 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 just, it just had the, like, letterbox to, like, the bottom and top that is just black. And it's like... 
why does it change? Okay, so how many times did it change? So at the beginning we had the letterbox, then we didn't. Then we did. 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 Okay, so it changed like eight times, right? So it started with it, and then it changed eight times throughout the episode. That's too much. That's actually bad. And I want to know why that is. I want to know if anyone knows why that is. If they, like, film, like, every scene in Toronto with a different camera. And they were just like, well, shit, this is what all we had. And they just put it together, but it doesn't seem right. Because, like, I, I, like, I don't know. Like... I mean, I suppose they could have, like, zoomed it in, but it would have looked bad. Like, that that's not... Ideal, ideally, you don't want to do that. You don't want to just zoom in in order to fit it to screen, right? Because it just looks bad. But it's... Like, every scene in Illus has a different aspect ratio than it does to Mars or space or whatever. Every scene that happens in our system, I suppose. And if it was just the first episode where it was normal until we got there and then we changed it and it just stayed there, it would have been fine. Or if it changed, but then we went back to normal and it just stayed there, it would have been fine, right? Like, consistency is what matters. But the fact that it kept going back and forth between different aspect ratio... And, okay, so I'm talking... I'm talking about something that might not matter, right? Because I'm talking about something... Um, this is this is the way it looks in Prime Video, right? Which is where I'm watching it. Maybe in a different version. If there's like a Blu-ray version or some shit, maybe it's it's not like that. But I think it would be because I cannot think of a reason why they do this. Because if it is on purpose, it's a terrible choice. It's a terrible idea if it is on purpose. And if it's not on purpose, then it then they don't have like. They probably don't have a way to deal with it. So this every version of the show should just have this. So it's just weird. It's just weird is what it is. So <laughs> sure. Sure. Um because there there are definite differences between season four and the other seasons, right? Because it's uh they got a different production team, I suppose. Um because they got hired by it, it got saved by Amazon versus Sadfi, um, which was before, so like the intro's different, and even I mentioned previous episodes, the transitions were different too. It was it, it didn't just go from one scene to the other. It was like a fade in, fade out kind of thing. So, um, all right. So anyway, let's talk about the actual episode. So it starts with Miller saying some shit. We reach out and reach out and reach out, flipping and flipping and flipping switches, like a goddamn monkey to see if something clicks. Why do we? the show for going to the podcast all day and leaving it all behind talk to me johnny don't ask for a liar be smart about this hmm so what do we got here okay so we got information that miller like the ghost of miller the investigator he actually hears like memories of like every person that was there on eros which makes sense because okay so, so so okay so every person that died on Eros got assimilated into like into the mainframe of the Paramolic or whatever which turned into the ring which turned into like whatever the it all got assimilated into the into the hive mind of of the construct Paramolic ancient race whatever you want to call it right they all got assimilated into it so the reason why we have Miller as a, as investigator is because it just it just thought okay uh, someone that knew Golden, which is the person that we 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 have to like use in order to get here for some reason, maybe it was because he had a ship and also that ship had a molecule that never came back. Maybe maybe it did. We just don't know it yet. And then it created the avatar of Miller because he was like the only person that could convince Holden to listen to him, right? So then it just put on his Miller persona using Miller memories that are there. So in a way, the investigator is Miller because what is anyone but a bunch of memories anyway? 
So if I can just channel the memories of Miller, who's now dead, he can essentially create a duplicate of Miller and actually be a duplicate of Miller, even though he's not, even though he is, right? So, um, so I think that that's what the investigator is. And he has assimilated not only Miller, but every person knows too. So the investigator has all of the, the memories and consciousness and everything about every person that died on that incident and got assimilated by it. Okay, sure. Um, that's what that is. Then there's a bunch of dead people that got raided by pirates and died. Um, and apparently the pirate that killed them was uh, the person that Naomi hooked up with a long time ago and I think she said she had the kid with that dude and then the dude left and and started doing some crazy shit and she was like oh my god I'm such an idiot for listening to someone like that 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 just has high charisma you know so Dio um dude if we had Dio in the expense that would be the best just a character that's just Dio a character that is just an asshole but he's like a theater kid about it because that is always a fun character to have a theater kid that it's just a piece of shit. Speaking of pieces of shit, Murthy here, he's a piece of shit too. Like Owen. Like, like, like same character. <laughs> Except Owen is growing a little in Torchwood as I'm watching it, right? But like Murthy here is, is just like, so he's like pissed the entire time. There wasn't a single scene where he wasn't just like, <sighs> just, just like angry, right? Given he should be angry because a bunch of people died and he said friends so i'm not sure to what degree he cares about those people and it is interesting because like he seems to be a, a very how do i put this it's like he seems to be a little bit pragmatic not necessarily like emotional right because like he goes to people and he goes like, okay, we found the shit. Our ship got sabotaged. Someone destroyed it or whatever. So it had to be one of you. And then the people go like, we would never. Why would we do such a thing? We needed it to get the materials out in order to fucking get food or whatever, right? And then he goes like, okay, somebody kill my crew. Somebody kill like 25 of my friends, all right? So you get the word out and whoever it is, you tell me. And I, I like that because he's not pointing a finger at anyone specifically. He's not going like, you did it. He goes like, okay, somebody did it. So let me know who it was. And make sure you find that person because fuck that person, right? But he's not necessarily going like, okay, you did it. He's not aimlessly pointing fingers at anyone. He's going, somebody did. And I want to know who that somebody was, right? And I, I like that. That is a small difference, but I do like that difference. And I do like that. So when they approach him and they start like intimidating him, like near the end of the episode. Okay, so. So uh, the belters, the, the belter dude who doesn't matter anymore because he's dead, he starts talking about how it, how difficult it is for belters and how much this means to them and whatever. And it's like, yes. Because it's like, okay, we have nothing, we just come here searching for a new opportunity, it's like a new hope, it's like a new place, so it's like, okay, maybe maybe we'll get somewhere here. And then they start, and they just slip in dirt, and then it's like, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna try to make the best out of this, and we're gonna try to colonize this thing, we're gonna try to have a new beginning, and have a, uh, have a, a good life moving onwards, and we're, we're, we're making history here, right? And, and then you fucking inners come here and destroy all our shit, which is true. To a degree. Like, Inners do exploit the Velters to a degree. So, he is right in, in saying that. And then, I like that Owen... Owen, Murtry, whatever, Owen, didn't dismiss him entirely, right? So, what he said is, don't lay your history on me. I didn't blow up shit on Ganymede. You and me have one problem today. Somebody in this shithole killed 23 of my friends. And then he just walks away. I like that because... So, 
the belter dude, he gives you the emotional part, which the emotional bit, which is like, we're out here, we built this, we're trying to make the better, the best out of this. Don't ruin this shit for us, like you always do. To what the answer Owen gives is, I didn't do shit. Like I never, like blow up Ganymede. Like I didn't do that myself. I didn't exploit your people. Like. I like that he's not saying that it didn't happen. He's saying I didn't do it. <laughs> so don't don't like start don't start a conflict with me because we have one problem right now and that problem is that like somebody blew up my ship and I'm trying to find who it was and kill 23 people, right? 23 people that come here with me. They're all dead and I'm trying to find out who it was. Like that's it. It's like He's like, he's like not putting his ego on this conflict. That, that, that's what I'm trying to get at. Like, he's not putting his ego on this conflict with this person. He doesn't have a conflict with this person. All he's saying is, dude, somebody destroyed my shit, right? And killed 23 people that were coming here with me. And I'm trying to find who the fuck it was. Like, I don't give a shit what happened to your people. I don't give a shit what you're trying to build here. I don't give a fuck. I'm just trying to do what I'm supposed to be doing, right? It's not necessarily the the good thing or the bad thing or the morally whatever. Like, he's not actually playing that game. He's just someone that is just like, I'm trying to find who killed those 23 people, right? Then, the dude threatens him, saying, care for Arthur. They ain't over yet. And then he goes, now that was a threat. And then shoots him in the head, dead, instantly. All right, so I like that he needed the thread in order to be like, all right, you're done. <laughs> because, like, he, he gives me the vibe of someone who's like, how do I put this? Like, how do I describe this character? Because I'm very interested in this character, in Owen, in Chief Mercury, right? I'm very interested in this character because he's, he seems, he's cold. He's absolutely a cold-ass bitch character, right? Like, he doesn't give a fuck, given by the fact that he just shot a guy through the head with, like, no hesitation, no problem, just stone cold killer. Like, cool. The thing is that he seems to be a person that is very, like, get to the point. Get to the thing that matters right now. Like, I don't give a fuck about your history. I don't give a fuck what you're trying to do here. Like, this, this this, right here that is in front of me right now, this is what matters to me. This is the problem. I'm trying to figure out what the fuck that shit was, right? And whenever I find it, I'm going to kill the person responsible. Absolutely. But that's, like, the only thing I give a shit about, right? Like, and, like, he's not... Like, here's the thing. It's the, like, he... I think that if he had worded some of the things that he said a little bit better, like, nicer... It wouldn't be as bad. Like, like if he's literally just saying, like, okay, people, okay, listen to me. I'm sorry if I came off the wrong way. I'm sorry if if, if I'm if I'm like being intimidating to y'all or if it sounds like I'm pointing fingers. I'm not trying to do that, okay? But here's the thing: is that 23 people that were coming here with me, 23 of my friends, they're dead. They died. 23 people died. 23 people that I knew died. And this indicates me that. Somebody did it. Maybe it wasn't you. Like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for calling you out, lady. Maybe it wasn't you. Maybe it was nowhere in this building. Maybe it was nowhere in this building. Okay? But somebody did it. And I, I need to figure out who it was. Because it killed so many people. It could kill me again. Like, it could kill me now. And, and, and the people that are left alive. Right? So, and you understand that you don't like me very much. Okay? And I, I'm not trying to, to start anything with anyone here, right? But I need to know who it was, because that, that person killed 23 of my friends. So, I'm sorry if I came off, like, I'm sorry if I came off, like, too strongly on, on anyone here. I'm sorry if I'm being too upset, but, like, 23 people died, man. So, if anyone knows anything, if anyone has a suspicion that it could be this person or not, because maybe that guy is kind of a dick, maybe we don't talk to him very much, and he's kind of a psycho... Maybe let me know who it was, and maybe I'll confront that person and be if it was him or not. All right, thank you for your attention, and I'll I'll, I'll just I'll just be over there. And then he just walks off. If he had worded it that way, I'm not saying that they would have helped him, 
but I'm saying that it wouldn't they wouldn't have been as dismissive as they were like every time that he said anything like that. The thing is that this guy is an asshole. So the way he says it, it's in the worst way possible, which is somebody here killed 23 of my friends. I'm going to find who it was and I'm going to kill them. And he just has like this angry look, like a fuck you. And like, it's just not good. It's just not good for him. That's, he's not good at socializing, right? He's not good at dealing with people, apparently. Which, again, is an Owen trait. But, like, Owen was a more emotional character. This guy, Murtry, he seems to be a more pragmatic character rather than emotional. Which I like. I actually like. Because I feel... I feel like this is gonna be a guy who, like... He's gonna be some sort of antagonist, right? He's some. He's gonna be some sort of antagonistic force. Maybe not a clear antagonist, but an antagonistic force. But he's not gonna be an antagonist because he, like, hates you or anything. It's gonna be an antagonist because it's gonna be like, I got my orders, this is what I gotta do. <laughs> right? Just like, I, 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 they tell me I have to shoot all these belters because I, I need to, like, like, establish, like, whatever in order to get those minerals or whatever the fuck. Right? It seems like he's that kind of character. He just does the thing that he needs to do, the, the thing that he came here to do. He doesn't necessarily have a moral compass that tells him, don't do that, or do that, even. Like, he doesn't have, like, a conscience or or a lack of conscience. He just doesn't care. He just does the thing that he has to do, right? So even here, when he shot that guy, he didn't shoot the guy because it pissed him off. He shot the guy because the guy threatened him. So he was like, all right, that was a threat, so you get to die. Pfft. All right, now I'm safe. Right? Because it's like, if I let you live, you can come and shag me while I'm sleeping. So, the best thing I can possibly do to ensure my survival is to just kill you right now. <laughs> so, there you go. That's what happened. Uh, so, that's... I, I I think that's an interesting character. And I hope I, I hope I got it right. Like, I hope he doesn't go super down the hole of, like, I'm just an asshole. Like, that's it. I'm just an asshole and I hate you and whatever. Because that, that's a little bit more boring. But if he's an asshole that, like, actually has, like, like things that he wants... He doesn't necessarily want to do anything. He just does the thing that he's supposed to do. That's more interesting, right? That's more interesting. Because as it is right now, this guy is not a bad guy. Like, that's the thing. He's not a bad guy. He's just an asshole. But he's not an asshole in the sense that he hates you. He's an asshole in the sense that he doesn't care about you. <laughs> right? So there you go. I, I like that. I like that character. And I, I want to see what they do with him. That was just instantly. That fucking killing was just instantly. He's a very good shot. He's a very good shot. Okay. Okay, moving onwards. Uh, Gunny is being framed for murder. Let me, let me watch that scene again at the beginning. At the beginning when she's walking into work. That's her. That's 100% her. I saw her. Okay, so that girl, Lily, Lily, if that's her real name. So when Ghani is walking into work, uh, Lily just just walks past her, and Ghani has this moment where she does like a double take, she's like, wait, what? And then she's like, okay, guess what's nothing, and then she keeps walking, right? So Lily is absolutely, first of all, a murderer, second, probably trying to frame Ghani. That's the whole thing. That's the whole deal. So, Lily was there. And I'm glad I remember this fucking character, right? I'm glad I remember these fucking characters because they ended up mattering. Because we only saw them for, like, one scene. And the only reason I remember them is because whenever... At this point, whenever names are said, I'm just writing them down. I just had the TXC open. I just wrote down David and Lily. And then I was like, yeah, whatever, right? Just in case. And now, earlier, when I was... I was doing the recap, I read the names, and I was like, who were they? Oh, the the kid and the, the and the chick with the cool hair. I remember Lily because that was a dumbass name, and it was with a chick with cool hair. It was like short and white, and I was like, that's cool. So I'm like, okay, I remember them. And now when I saw her, instantly I was like, wait, that's her. I, I, I 100% remember that's her. So then when they were like, all right, there's a dead body there, I was like, oh shit, she's gonna matter. Because it has to be her. Otherwise, what was the point of that scene? So then, moving forward, um, 
when when afterwards we follow uh Gunny follows David and he's like okay he's he's cooking drugs he's not even doing drugs he's cooking them he's making drugs right then Lily shows up with like a bunch of goons and then Gunny is like all right I'm going to beat you to death now and then she proceeds to beat everyone to not death but almost um David is super scared and that's what makes Gunny stop he's she was about to just off someone with like uh, an electrified fist, right? And then she was like, all right, maybe not do that, but I'm still going to punch him. And she's just like, oh, no, no, no. Okay. So then she just just takes David uh, away. They go back home or whatever. We didn't get to see what happened after that. But when she punches, like, uh, Lily, she's like, fuck you, bitch. Lily was like, oh, you're so fucked. Which tells me, and uh, this is already based on, like, assumptions that I made earlier, she is trying to frame Gunny because they found a body of someone whose nip got snapped and, and, and was there in, in the place where she's working. And then the police showed up and they were investigating. It's like, okay, looking at everyone. And then they saw Gunny and they were like, wait, you. And then they took Gunny to, to, to the police station or whatever. And she got interrogated by a detective. And it's like, okay, so you are a former Marine. You were discharged. You have a history of being involved in the assault of your own men, like, twice. So, uh, what do you have to say for yourself? Because the way you're trained, you could totally have killed a person. And he was right there where you worked, so who else could it be? And Ghani, first of all, she was, she was just being dumb and stupid and sassy. And that's great. I like that. But then when, uh, when as soon as they went, like, okay... A dead body is involved. She's like, oh shit, really? Like, that's what this is about? Sorry. And then they ask question, and she's like, okay, listen. I didn't do that shit, and I don't know who the fuck did it. I do understand that you're suspecting me for being capable of doing that, but I didn't do it. And that incident where my own men were were being, like, uh, taken out, and I was there... You probably don't know the full story, and you probably don't care about what the full story is. So I'm not going to convince you, probably. But I didn't do it. And I like that then she brought up, okay, it seems like you're very fond of Earthers, right? Like, uh, Madame Azevedo has summoned you. That's like, hmm, you don't really care about much that much. And then she got upset. She was, Ghani got actually upset because she was like, everything I've ever done was for fucking Mars, you bitch. The reason why I came back here in order to face, like, my, my, my court martial or whatever was because I gave a shit about Mars. The reason why I'm still here working my ass off is for Mars every day. Like, she's still committed to the to the forward propulsion of Mars as a society, and she works uh, in order for that to happen. She cares. So she got upset whenever the, the detective woman uh, implied that she didn't. And then the detective woman seemed pleased with that. She was like, mm, I got it under his skin, but whatever, go. So then she went to Avasarala. And Avasarala had this moment where she she had like a speech, <laughs> which was bullshit, by the way. I like that. I like that she was like, a dear friend of mine, a male seller, he said some stuff like this and like this. And today we're, we're gathering here today in order to like appreciate that and celebrate that here. Uh, between our, our, our two sides and everyone, and it's like. Then Gani has that scene where she was like, "Do you know Sada at all?" And she was like, "We barely spoke. <laughs> I don't know if he said that shit. I just made it up." And <laughs> and then Gani is just upset because to her, in her eyes, Christian was using her in order to to just have a, a better show. It was just like. It was all more. It was all superficial. She didn't actually care about Gunny. She was just like, "I'm trying to for everyone to see that we're we're getting along. You know, we're buddy buddies." And Gunny is like, "What everyone saw is that like I'm the lap dog of like Earth, and you just summoned me." And I was just like, "Hey, let's go! Yeah, yeah, yeah!" Like I'm not like I'm nothing, right? So then Christian goes like, "Okay, come work for me. You'll be something with me." And then Ghani goes like, no, I'm not. I'm not going. I'm sorry, but I'm not. So fuck you. I'm out. And she just 
She just walked away. She stuck to her guns. She was like, I'm much more than just that. And I don't want to do that. And Christian is a little bit manipulative, even though they went through shit. It's like, I, I'm just going back to my old regular more stuff or whatever, right? Uh, then the drug bust happens, and now Gunn is probably going to be in a lot of trouble. So hopefully, uh, hopefully uh, Christian or whoever can, can get her out of that mess. I completely forgot that that was Christian's husband. Did they change actors or not? Maybe they didn't. Maybe they did. I don't actually remember because, like, the last time we saw, like, Christian's husband, it was, like, like, season one episode, like, seven. Dude, it's been a long-ass time. I, I didn't remember him. I didn't know it was him. Is it him? Is it a different actor? Is it a different person? Did you marry? I don't know. Thing is, that, that dude was there. And, and there you go, right? Uh, I Sorry, I didn't get it. But I completely forgot. I kind of forget that she has a family, but she does. Um, okay, so now I'm looking at this. So I didn't get it initially, but... Uh, Christian sees this, like, pamphlet, this, like, image. Uh, no, what am I saying? It's, it, it's a fucking... It's, she's seeing a news article in her, like, mobile device that is just, like, a piece of glass, right? So, uh, breaking news, UN Home Secretary to resign. Cabinet Administer resigns over policy difference on colonization of new system beyond ring gates. And then we see the picture, and it's Nancy Gao. That is the woman that uh, Christian was talking to previous episode. When they were having the discussion, like, at the beginning, they were having the discussion of, like, she was saying... We have a bunch of ships with a bunch of people just waiting there, and they're going to be food for pirates if we don't actually send them in. We, we should send them in for colonization and see what happens. Well, Christian holds the view that this is this could be really dangerous, so maybe let's not do that yet. Let's keep that on hold. So, now she resigned. Okay. So, a I, I cabinet member has resigned. We didn't really know anything about her, but she's gone. I don't know if it's going to matter, but what might matter is the fact that um, that is going to create, like, that is going to add fuel to the fire of, like, people saying, let us go in, let us go in. You know, people are going to be like, there is even internal conflict in the cabinet, right? And and then there's going to start more, like, riots or, or whatever, just being like, let us go through, let us go and colonize or whatever, right? So that could absolutely happen. Ashford and Drummer are being tasked with police work and they don't like it, but they're gonna see if they can chase that person that fucked Naomi over years ago. I don't remember the name of the ship that they said. I'm, I'm gonna try and see if I can find it. Marco Inaros. Okay, I'm gonna write that down. Marco Inaros. Naomi's asshole BF ship. That's the Marco Inaros, so maybe there's gonna be something that happens there. Okay, let's look, take a look at the second, like, Miller scene or whatever. Not Miller, but like the the Can mind of Miller. Got to file a report. Got to tell them who did it. Finish the paperwork. I know, I know. Stop it! I'm doing what you want. Stop it! Okay. And then it comes from Hold on and tells him to go and do some shit. By the way, when we saw that, um, when we saw the construct that Miller was seeing, it, there was a light that was coming from underneath the construct, right? Like the building, the super high advanced high tech building. It was from below it and then it was going up. So I don't know what that means, but I'm just pointing it out. Amos got drunk and fucked with a chick. There you go. That happened. And then Holden went down there and just just got a root just did some gardening for miller and that activated the building and then everything went dark and then lightning started falling from the sky and that's where we're at that's what happened this episode also naomi got like really sick she can't really move because so her drugs are okay for her like muscle density and like bones but it's not actually helping her cardiovascular system her heart is weak and I suppose, like, her veins or whatever is weak. So she has to take it easy. And I like that he, they, he said that, and then immediately afterwards, we we have a scene where 
where the Miller shit happens, and Holden and Naomi are in bed together. So it's like, okay, she didn't take it easy last night, probably. So then Alex is like, okay, Naomi, you stay here. Somebody has to look after the ship, right? Wink, wink. And then she's like, okay, I'll stay. So it's like, yeah, Naomi, please take it easy. Don't just go out running or whatever. Even though we might have, like, fucked the world. <laughs> like, I want to see what happens next episode. Like, is, is that going to look like that for everyone else, too? Everyone on the planet, just everything is dark and lightning is falling everywhere. So we'll see what happens. But yeah, I think that is it for this reaction episode. I don't know if there's anything else I can talk about. That was fun. That was fun. Things are happening. Things are moving. Yeah, I think I think that is it. That was a good one. See you next week then. Or if you don't want to wait for next week, you can watch next episodes already on Patreon. If you go over there, uh, it's already on early access as well as full length. Check out the links in the description. And thank you so much for being here. Hope you had a good time. See you next time, okay? Take care. Bye.